Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at building what's called a staggered animation. An animation that uses multiple controllers to achieve what it's trying to do. Here we have a basic number line. We've talked about tween animations and curve animations in Flutter. Each animation has a interval between 0 and 1. And then you can scale this interval by using your duration. So if you want this interval to be from zero to say like five seconds, then you'd put a duration of 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. The concept behind a staggered animation, however, is to cut up this interval and to have your object do different things in different parts of the interval. For instance, in this part here, from here to here, we'll have our box change opacity from nothing to something, so it sort of fades into the screen. And then from here to here, we can have our box rotate about the Z axis. We can have another interval here where we have our box move up and to the right or up and to the left or maybe down and to the left or wherever we want it to move. And then maybe from here to the middle we have our box change shape or scale or maybe both. And then we have whatever shape we have now wait until it gets to the end of the animation and then everything reverses. And so this is what is called staggered animation. So in a staggered animation we can either cut everything up like we're doing here or we can have multiple controllers doing multiple things overlapping one another. From here to here we could have the animation change opacity and then we could start the rotation maybe here rather than after the opacity finishes. And we could do the same over here. So we could say, okay, well, when we want to move our box, we could have it move before it stops rotating. All right, so with the theory and the visualization out of the way, let's kind of jump into the code here. Now, with the way that we want to do things in this particular application, we want our root widget to actually be a stateful widget. So we'll take the MyApp class, we'll have it extend stateful widget, and then we'll override the create state function We'll create a my app state class, have it extend state with my app in it. And then because we have an animation going on inside of this class, we need to add in the ticker provider state mix in. We'll create our animation controller. And then we can override the init state function and set up the controller by instantiating a new animation controller, putting in the duration that we want this controller to animate over, and then adding vsync to this object. We can also override the dispose function to have this neatly dispose of our animation controller. In this case, I'm going to make use of the null operator to check to see if the controller is null or not. And then if it's not null, we'll dispose of it. Now we do want to bring in Dart async because we're going to have our animation move with an asynchronous function. And we'll do this with a function called start animation. This will return null, so we just put future. And then of course, because it's asynchronous, we need to mark it as async. We want to await on the controller moving forward. We're also going to add this or cancel method to the end. And what this does is it adds error handling to our controller forward method. So if the controller moves forward and then something happens, then it throws out a ticker canceled exception. We can use this try block to catch that exception by saying try await controller forward or cancel and then saying on ticker canceled do something. We'll just print out animation failed. Now let's override our build function. We're going to return a material app with a scaffold in it and the scaffold will have an app bar and then the body will be made up of a gesture detector. Inside of our gesture detector, we'll have an on tap function. This will start the animation. So it'll run our start animation function. Then the child for this will be a center. Inside of this center, we'll have a container that will be 350 by 350 and we'll make it gray with an opacity of 0.1. And then we'll give it a border that is blue gray with an 0.8 opacity. And then this container will just have a child of container. And this will be where we put our actual animated item. And this is where we'll put the item that we want to animate. So the idea is that we have this big box in the middle of the screen. When we tap the box, it starts the animation. And then we have our item animated. 
so that it does all this stuff in front of our box. All right, let's build up the class to create our animation. We'll just call this class animated box and the animated box will have a key and then we will pass in the controller, which will then assign to a final animation type with double in it called controller. We want to create more animations inside of this class as well. So we have our controller, which is our main animation controller, and we're going to be splitting it up into different animations. So our first animation will be our opacity animation, then we'll have our width and our height, we'll have a movement animation, then we'll have our radius animation, and we'll have a color animation and a rotate animation. The best way to set all of this up is to extend our constructor and to just initiate all of these properties inside of the constructor like this. So for instance, opacity will equal a tween with a double in it, and then we will call the animate function on it and we'll pass in a curved animation. For the tween begin, we want to start at 0, 0, and then the end will be 1, 0. And these will be the numbers that we're plugging into our item's opacity. The opacity of an item can be between 0 and 1.0. These are the numbers that we want our animation to output for us. Then inside of the animate method, we pass in our curved animation. And the curved animation needs our parent, which is our controller. Then we need to define the curve by defining an interval and then defining the curve that we want this interval to animate over. So for this interval, we're going to animate from 0 to 0 0.1, which if you remember our line would be from here to here. And then we're going to use a curve called fast out slow in, which looks like this. So it sort of speeds up in the beginning and then slows down in the end. Next, we want to set up our rotation event. We want our item to begin rotating at 0.0, .0. and then for our end we want our number to be 3.141 which is pi times 4. And this will make it so that our animation will actually rotate around two times. The interval for this particular animation will start at 0.1, which is where our other animation ended. And then we'll have it end at 0.3. And we'll have it animate along this curve. So it will sort of have a quick beginning and then a slow ending. Now let's set up our movement. And we accomplish this by changing the edge insets. Our movement animation takes in edge insets rather than the double and we can then use the edge insets tween widget for this animation. So this allows us to define our beginning and end as edge inset widgets instead of as doubles or any other value. And so with our movement we'll begin with edge insets only and we want to move from the bottom and we want to start with our box sitting at the bottom with a padding of 10 and a padding on the left of zero. And then we'll have our box move upwards by 100 pixels and then to the left by 75 pixels. So this will have the box move in a diagonal direction. Inside of the animate method, we'll call again on curved animation. We'll pass in our controller as the parent. And then we want to have our interval be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. So this begins where our rotation ended. And so immediately after our rotation ends, the container will move in a diagonal direction up and to the right. And we can make use of the curves fast out slow in curve again for this one. Now let's set up our width. And for this one, we'll have it between double again. And we want to define the beginning size of the box. So we'll have our box be a 50 by 50 box to begin with. And then by the end of this particular part of the animation, it will end as a 200 by 200 square. These properties that we're putting in here that are our beginning properties actually apply retroactively to the animation. This means that when the box actually appears, it will begin with a 50 by 50 dimension and that won't change until this width animation actually executes. And this is the same for the other properties. This means that for instance, our opacity will begin at zero, our rotation will begin at zero, and our edge insets will begin at 10 and zero for bottom and left. We want to define the interval that this animation will take place over and we'll have it take place from 0.4 
2.6 and then we'll give it our curve which again will be the fast out slow in curve. Now because height will be identical to width we can just copy and paste the width animation as well. So our box will start at a 50-50 and then end at a 200, 200, and the actual change in the width and the height will happen over 0.4 and 0.6 with the same curve. All right, so now let's do our radius. Our radius is going to use the border radius tween, and that's because we're using a border radius for our radius animation. Now, because we want our square to turn into a circle, We'll start it out at a circular border radius of 0.0, .0 so it will have completely square corners. And then when it hits the end of this interval, it will become a complete circle. So we then say border radius dot circular 100.0. For our radius animation, we'll use curved animation with an interval of 0.6 to 0.75. And then we'll have the curve B curve ease. And this is what the ease curve looks like. Now we want to set up color. For our color, we'll start with a fairly light shade of red, and then we'll end with a dark deep purple, so this color here. And our red will be red 200, so it'll look like this color here. And for the color change, we'll have this take place from the beginning of our animation all the way to the end. So our box will appear with a red shade, and then it will slowly turn into a deep purple shade by the end of our animation. For the color change, we'll make use of curves.linear, and this is just a line, so it will have a fairly normal progression from red to purple. Now, because this is still our constructor, we need to add the super keyword at the end and then put the key in for the key of our super component. And that will end the initiation of our animation. So just to recall, we have the opacity change from zero to one, and that's in the beginning. And then we have our box rotating twice. Then we'll have our box move up and to the right, and we'll have our box scale upwards to 200 pixels by 200 pixels and then we'll have our box turn into a circle and while this is all happening we'll have our color change from red to deep purple all right so now let's override our build method so that we can actually generate this box and then have it animated to do this we want to create what's called a animated builder widget the animated builder needs to have the animation, which in this case will be our controller animation, because that's the parent animation to all of the other animations that we created. And then we'll have the builder, which is sort of like the list view builder, except rather than taking in the index of the list view, it takes in a widget, which is the child. And we use this to return the widget that we want to animate. We're just going to return a container. For this container, we need to set up the padding value, which will be our movement dot value. Then because we want our container to rotate, we need to set up the transform. And we can do this by initializing our transform with the identity matrix and then cascading the rotate Z function onto it with our rotate value inside of it. We'll have our box start in the center of the main widget. So we'll add alignment, alignment center. Then because we're manipulating the opacity of this container, we're going to add an opacity child widget. And then for that opacity value, we'll put in our opacity animations value. We'll have another container inside of the opacity. And this will be the container that you actually see as the animation, even though there's a container on the outside of it. And for our container, We'll set up our width and height with width value and height value. Then we want to set up the box decoration with our color value inside of it. And for our container, I'm just going to give it a border that is a cayenne color. And then the width will be two pixels. We'll put in our border radius value, which we'll just put in as border radius dot value. Okay, so that's all we need to do for this class. Let's plug it into our other class. And to get this to work properly, we put in the animated box that we just created, and we put in our controller for the controller, and then this wires everything up properly. All right, so here's our application. You can see we have this square, and then when we click anywhere on the screen, our animation will then execute. You can see the animation is pretty fast, but we have a way to slow it down for debugging. 
For this, we want to import the Flutter scheduler package. And as the name suggests, this allows us to manipulate the scheduling aspects of our application. Inside of our main build function, we can then add a property called time dilation, which will allow us to change the time factor of our animation while we're debugging it. So because I want our animation to be 10 times slower, I'm going to put in time dilation 10.0. I also want to make it so that the animation goes in reverse after it completes. We'll add an await controller.reverse or cancel to our start animation function. Now we can restart the animation, click on the box and see our animation happen and then go in reverse. Now if I click it again, you'll notice that the time dilation will kick in. So it's going much slower than it was before. And you can see each of the individual animations happening. So it became a circle just now, and now it should turn around and go backwards. Here we go, so now it's becoming a square, then it's going to shrink, then it should move down and to the left. Now it should rotate twice, two, and then it should fade out. Let's fiddle with some of these intervals so that we make it so that our animations overlap one another. So I'll take our opacity and we'll have it go from 0 to 0.2 rather than 0.1. This means it will overlap with our rotate animation. Then we'll have the movement animation overlap with the rotate by putting the start at 0.2 and the end at 0.4. And we'll make it so that our width change will happen at 0.3, so it overlaps with our movement animation. And we'll keep our height the same. This means that our width will change before our height changes. And then finally, to turn our item into a circle, we'll have it change before the height actually finishes animating. So we'll put it at 0.5. Alright, so let's save this and see the new animation. Here it's fading in, and now it should start to rotate. And you can see the width is expanding before the height. And now the height's expanding and it's already turning into a circle. And now the color has finally finished. Right now it's going in reverse. And you can see the height is changing before the width. And then it becomes a square, starts to rotate. And then fades out. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.